Hey folks, Kevin here. Well, it's November 9th, 2024, and recently one of the comments, actually uh, my nephew Eddie uh, uh, made a comment and thought it might be a good idea to talk a little bit about how to start a, a small pumpkin patch. And uh, so this is my first time trying to post a video similar to the way that I'm going to do it now. Uh, I, what I did was I put together uh, a few different articles on and uh, the concept of starting a real small garden and uh, with, the minds, with the mindset of it being pumpkins or squash. And certainly uh, the, it'll, it, the information I'm providing is very, it can be applied to many different uh, things that you may want to start as a small beginner gardener and all. So it could be you may want to grow a couple of fruit trees or berry bushes like you see all the videos that we have around here. And, uh, and I do encourage people to start small, be successful, make it enjoyable and all. Uh, so what I thought I'd start out with is uh, uh, if you're thinking about starting a small pumpkin patch, uh, sometimes we, you know, there's, there's so many different varieties of pumpkins and there's so many different varieties of, of squash as well. So I thought I'd just... Uh, start off with uh, some of the similarities and differences between pumpkins and squash plants, although they're very similar in many respects. Uh, so uh, they're both part of the, the same uh, family with uh, melons and, uh, I can't think, pumpkin, squash, melons, uh, and I can't think of the other, the other group, the, the, uh, and cucumbers. Uh, Curcubitaceae, I think, is what it is. I, I'm not positive, uh, but they're they're very similar. They have very similar growing conditions, which I'll go into. Very similar uh, watering requirements. Uh, pests and disease are quite similar for for both pumpkins and uh, squash plants. Uh, but it, depending on and what your goals are, and it's really trying to get an idea of what your what your goals are when you're when you're starting a project like this. So sometimes people want to have grow pumpkins for their um, for their uh, uh, I guess atmospheric effect, you know, where they're where they're used for uh, Halloween or Thanksgiving and all, or making a pumpkin pie or other dishes from pumpkins versus uh, squash plants like winter squash plants are one category of squash plants and believe me there's so many different delicious varieties even delicious there's culinary varieties of pumpkins uh, besides just having the standard pumpkin pie and all there there's some that are just like squash plants as far as their culinary uses um, but uh, squash plants you know they're broken down into summer squash and winter squash the winter squash are, uh, the, the features of them are, uh, you let them get really mature to the point where, they're, where, they're, uh, where their protective layer is, is almost impenetrable. You can't stick your, your fingernail through it. Uh, it really gets aged where in the summer squash, bigger isn't better. You want to have the smaller summer squash. You don't want to have the squash getting to the point where they're, de where they're developing seeds unless you're keeping one or two plants. Let them go to full maturity, develop the seeds, and then you can save the seeds from them. Uh, so the fruit, the fruit is quite different amongst the different pumpkins and squash uh, plants. Uh, they're, uh, but I'd say for the most part, their their growth habits are very similar, but their uh, the space that they require is somewhat similar, but it's variable. Uh, and the taste and and uses of them are are fairly different as well, and so I wrote a whole article on the differences between pumpkins and squash and similarities as well, and I think that's enough for me to just say. And I'll post these articles on our website, mindfullivingsanctuary.com. So, I think uh, once you've you've looked at the the various different varieties of pumpkins. And squash. I mean, some people want to grow giant pumpkins as well, which are I'm not going to get into that because I have no expertise in it. Just just from watching uh, people on YouTube growing them. But uh, some people just want to get the experience, get it, get the good feeling of being out in the in the garden, and maybe just have the 
the atmospheric effect of uh, growing pumpkins for decorations or for storing uh, winter squash so that you can uh, enjoy that food over the winter months and the summer squash eat it during the summer months and all. So really knowing what your goals are, choosing the right varieties uh, to start off with is pretty important. Uh, choosing a location, well that's essential, so uh, both, both the pumpkins and squash need at least six to eight hours of full sun every single day during the growing season. Uh, space, they really do take a lot of space as opposed to growing onions or, or, uh, or a blueberry plant or something like that. Uh, you know, uh, it, it, with some, so there's, um, there's wide spreading pumpkins and, and uh, winter squash, but there's also um, linear vining of some uh, summer squash as well. Uh, so really understanding the size of the plot that you're going to need is pretty important. So if you're going to have a uh, 100 by, uh, let's say, a 200 square foot plot uh, with pumpkins or uh, winter squash, you may only get four, maybe five, maybe six plants in that area wh where, where you might plant um, uh, winter squash and pumpkins every four feet apart, you could pump, uh, plant summer squash every, let's say, 18 inches to two feet apart. Uh, just thinking about the space that they require. And packing them in too closely is a bad idea. Uh, you really need good airflow around the leaves, so they need the full sun, they need really well draining soil, uh, they need uh, lots of, uh, they're going to need consistent watering, especially during the flowering and fruiting seasons, times of the year when they're, when they're flowering and producing uh, uh, their fruit. Uh, it's just so important to, to have them, the space allotted for them uh, it, it is really, really important. And, uh, and that really requires, just with our trees and all, we want good airflow going through them. Otherwise, you're going to have uh, powdery mildew or other issues. And with watering, I would go with either drip irrigation or um, soaker hoses. Uh, you don't want to be watering uh, from overhead, if at all possible, especially when it's not sunny and bright where the water drops uh, dry out quickly on the leaves because then we're going to introduce uh, fungal uh, diseases as well. Um, there are squash bugs that, that, you can, that, that you potentially can have to deal with. Uh, so sunlight, uh, adequate space, and, uh, and air circulation are really important. Another thing to think about is, um, besides the square footage that you have, uh, dedicated them in a nice sunny location, and, and they, they don't want, uh, I should say this, it really depends on your soil type as well. So nice loamy soil is really important. So what is loamy soil? Well, the ideal loamy soil is probably equal parts of sand, silt, and clay. Uh, and sand, probably everybody's familiar with sand. Uh, it seems real tiny, but that's the largest of those three uh, soil decomposing components. So this all comes from the mother rock. The, 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 as, as rocks and boulders are, are gradually broken down, they finally get to a sand size, which we're all familiar with. And then that sand, if it continually gets broken down, uh, it goes into the size of silt. So sand is a larger molecule, is a larger particle. Silt is a smaller particle. And clay is an even smaller particle. Uh, so we know with clay, it can be watertight, uh, and therefore we don't have adequate drainage for the plant. So if, especially if it's, if you're, uh, it, it'd be nice if you had a nice gentle slope to the property, but not everybody has that possibility. And if during uh, times of rain, you see water pooling on the surface of the ground, you'd have to do something there, either put in a drainage ditch or mound up the soil in the areas where you're going to be uh, planting these plants. Uh, really important that they aren't setting in water because they'll get disease as a result of the fungal uh, opportunistic uh, invaders. Uh, so uh, choosing a location that's sunny, 
good airflow uh, that you can protect with a fence, if at all possible, it's because uh, wildlife do love uh, getting into the uh, into these plants. And you've seen in our videos that every year the deer get into some of our squash and all. Um, so uh, planning the the the, uh, the 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 site so that you've got uh, adequate drainage of the soil. So let's say you've got really heavy clay soil. Um, then you want to, if you can, mix some sand or silt in with that, but lots and lots of organic material. Let's say you, you've got, got sandy soil and clay soil, both of them will benefit from having lots and lots of organic material. And organic material is just things that have broken down over time. It could be leaves, it could be wood chips, uh, it could be uh, your, your compost pile, all sorts of different uh, organic material will not only help to enrich the soil, but it'll also make it more, more easily inhabitable for the root systems of the plants that you're putting in there. The soil also, I'd say that the soil pH is uh, just slightly acidic. A neutral is, is a pH of 7. Somewhere between 6 and 7 would probably be a really good uh, place to start with just about most pumpkins and squash uh, varieties. Uh, prepping the, the site where, where the soil is. So, uh, like most things, if, if you know that you, that you want to start, let's, so right now in central New York in the northern hemisphere, uh, we're about to get snow before too long, and the next month we'll have, we'll have snow. W within this month we'll have snow. And uh, so if I knew, and I was starting off and, and advising someone uh, at this point of time, I would say, uh, choose that location now. And often there's grass there, there's weeds there in those locations and all. Uh, and again, you don't want any trees overhanging, you don't want shade there as well. Uh, so I would choose that spot and then figure out the size of the plot that I want, want to d get. And you could do occultation. And occultation is a process of using like black plastic and laying it on the lawn area that you're, or where the grass and weeds are. And you leave it there for a few months. Now, typically you do this you do this in the spring or summertime, but now I think would be an ideal time if you can keep that plastic or it's like a silage tarp. You want a black plastic so that the uh, so that when the sun hits it, it warms up the soil surface, and also it decreases it, it, it eliminates photosynthesis, so the sun doesn't get through the black plastic. And, there, and those, the grass and the weeds require photosynthesis, require the sun in order to produce the simple sugars that make that plant alive. So most of your weeds and, mo and just about all of your grasses can be eliminated by having three to four months of that black plastic on it. And so if you were to do it during, during the uh, fall time, you could rake up a whole bunch of leaves, uh, maybe run the mower over them to, to mulch them up some and leave that right on the surface as well. Then put the black plastic on it and then putting rocks or bricks or boards, whatever you have to have on it, around the margins. And then uh, by the time it's a good time to plant these plants, and the, the, the squash and pumpkins, you want the temperature, the soil temperature to be about 70, 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Now the soil below the black plastic will be about 70 degrees be, uh, before the, uh, the lawn is. So, uh, you know, if you've got a few months where you can do that, wait until the soil temperatures around the, uh, the perimeter of the other areas on the lawn are getting close to that temperature. And, you know, that gets a little bit dicey here where we're located, um, but it certainly is possible. Uh, so many squash and pumpkin plants require between 80 and 110 days for, to reach maturity from the time that you're planting them. Um, let me go down and see if I got any notes here that uh, soil amendments. So uh, we always want to try and improve our, our soil, whether it's sands or, or, or clay. Uh, <coughs> loamy soil is best. Uh, so we do no-till or minimum till here, and the reason that we don't use a rototiller is because we destroy the soil structure. All of those, uh, those glue-like substances that the microorganisms, and there's trillions and trillions of them 
in a tablespoon of soil that's really viable and healthy. And uh, we don't fertilize, we allow the microorganisms to feed it and we just feed the microorganisms by using leaf or compost, leaf mater material, leaf mold, compost, uh, old uh, you know, kitchen waste, that sort of thing. And you can do that during the off season. You actually use kitchen waste and I made videos on how to do that in buckets in your gardens. Uh, and if you're not certain how good your soil is, then you can bring it to, like here in Oswego County, uh, and most, most counties and states have uh, county offices that will do soil testing for you. So you can have your soil tested if, uh, if you don't feel comfortable. If you're doing the pH, you can go ahead and get little test strips. They'll probably have them at most of the big box, uh, box stores as well, the tractor supply, those sorts of places. Uh, so this time of year, if I were to lay down a black plastic, let's say 100 foot by 100 foot, boy, you could really have one heck of a garden there. But 100 square feet is just 10 by 10. And so you can actually start off pretty small with just a couple of plants and, and accomplish that. But again, choosing the site and choosing the varieties that you want to grow is, is really a key first step. Um, uh, protecting your plants from critters. Uh, now we use horseradish and garlic uh, as, uh, as what we call companion plants. In other words, putting those right around the plants that we want to dis discourage. There's limited success. They also have deer deterrents that you can use that you can put around the perimeter in the ground. It stinks pretty bad. Use coyote uh, urine, those sorts of things, uh, which I have very limited success. I, I explored those early on, and we actually enjoy on just about every part of our property the deer being there, the wildlife being there, um, and we let them consume what they want. But when you're first starting off, you don't want to have that. Uh, mulching the area. Uh, using uh, weed-free mulch. I really like the double ground hardwood bark mulch. Many people will use uh, pine bark mulch. That's readily available. I would steer clear of any mulches that are um, any mulches that have dyes and also just be really careful. Nowadays there's so many things that are that are not not pleasant. Um, the other way that takes a little bit more time to prep the soil is doing sheet mulching, and that's using cardboard, removing all the tape from the cardboard. Uh, you know, it'd be great if you had either leaf mold or compost that you could lay down on the surface of the ground, and you've already chosen the, the site that gets the sunlight, that gets a good airflow. There's no big shade or there. It's not a valley where water is going to collect and all, and uh, and you lay down. Or whatever organic material down there first. Uh, then you can lay cardboard down, wet the cardboard down, and then um, putting a mulch layer on top of that. Could be straw, could be you know uh, bark like we talked about, wood chips, those sorts of things. Um, sourcing seeds versus saving seeds. So if you're just starting off, uh, First, choose the varieties that you want, and, and I would always try to get a, a grower, and you can find them online. Yeah, um, you, you, may, you may be able to go and buy the organic uh, squash or pumpkins that you want. It, these are for if you're culinary uses, if you're going to be consuming this food and consuming this, this, these uh, plants. Um, so, uh, so you can save the seeds, and I've made lots of videos on saving seeds and all. And I'll make sure that that's in one of the articles as well that I post on our website. Um, but, you know, unlike many seeds, like our, our, some, many of our tree seeds, we want to keep them moist. They've got to have cold stratification because they're a perennial plant, meaning that they come back. You plant them once and they keep coming back year after year. So those seeds, like a pawpaw seed, really, really sensitive to desiccation. You can't let them dry out. you got to keep them moist. They have to go through a period of cold stratification, meaning we put them in a refrigerator or you plant them directly in the ground uh, in the fall time. And uh, it's a slower way of things going, but that's, that's, that's good. And these, uh, that's a perennial group of plants. When we're talking about the squashes and the pumpkins, 
uh, we're talking about annual plants. In other words, you have to save the seed for them and plant them every single year, year after year. Uh, it'd be wise for me to mention crop rotation, um, you know, so you can decrease the chances of disease uh, occurring uh, as a result of uh, the, the, the pests that like that plant, well, some of them will over, uh, overwinter in the soil and come back and affect them. So doing different crop rotations, like switching between totally different uh, related fa families, like if you want to grow broccoli one year, and then you can grow potatoes or squash the next year, that sort of thing. So you don't want to keep the, the potential pests thriving in those beds. Uh, so once you choose <laughs> sourcing the seeds, I jump around a lot. Even I've got my notes, uh, I jump around a lot. So sourcing the seeds, get a good, reliable, organic uh, variety of seeds. Uh, there's seed saver organizations. You can look online uh, and, and they share their seeds. So we share our seeds. We don't do it as an organized uh, um, activity, you know, doing it with, with many people, but uh, like, you know, we give away a lot of our seeds to people who are local around the area, like our scarlet red runner beans. We, we, we almost always have plenty. And many of our seeds, they, they can store and be stored for, um, you know, multiple years if kept dry, dark, and cool. So once you dry out the pumpkin seeds or the squash seeds, you dry them, not in an oven, <laughs> but you want to dry them out so that they're nice and dry. Uh, and then you, you keep them, store them in a cool, dark, uh, dry location. And so we keep them in our root cellar. So all of our different annual seeds we keep down in our root cellar, which stays around 50 degrees Fahrenheit, which is just fine. And so many of our seeds are viable, you know, 10 years later. Uh, I don't know that that's a good guideline for everybody to, to go by, but we've had really good success with, with most of the varieties of seeds that, that we save. And I do have seed saving videos on everything from tomatoes to different squash plants. Uh, I've done them over the years, I'm the peppers. Uh, right now I'm saving some, we, we did all of our nuts, our uh, hazelnuts, our uh, where it's our chestnuts, our almonds, our, um, I didn't do any acorns this season. I know I'm forgetting a couple of uh, nut seeds. And now I'm doing some high bush cranberry seeds, some uh, flowering crab apple seeds as well. I've got those in buckets right now. Uh, but it's, 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 it's enjoyable. It's very rewarding uh, saving your own seeds. And if you've got that, that social, uh, cultural uh, gene in you, and I think, Eddie, you do, uh, then, you know, that social part, you know, sharing seeds and exchanging seeds, just making sure that the people that you're exchanging seeds with, that you're getting seeds from, are not using uh, chemicals and all. Oh, and with the sheet mulching, the cardboard, besides... Um, removing the tape and labels on the cardboard. Steer clear of the wax ones that, that would come from, you know, the, the produce stores and all. Uh, and uh, and you, I would be cautious with some of the colorful cardboards as well. Uh, things have really changed a lot over the years. My practices have, have evolved, uh, but the, to deal with microplastics and some of the harmful chemicals that are in our cardboard, that are in our uh, pigmented cardboards uh, is an issue, and the wax-coated ones as well. Uh, see if I have anything else on this. Uh, harvesting, cleaning the seeds, drying the seeds, storing the seeds. Um, you know, timing. You know, when to plant. You know, when. Uh, you know, we want want in this. Uh, typically, we want the temperature to be 70 degrees Fahrenheit or greater. Uh, 90 degrees Fahrenheit is fine. Uh, so south of where we are, uh, you have a much better growing season for your different squash and all. Um, when it, and then I'll have one for determining when to harvest it. So, and I'll break it down into, like the summer squash, like I mentioned earlier, those are the ones you're going to eat throughout the season. Man, there's so many delicious ones. Uh, 
and we just kept restricting and, and reducing the number number ones and, and some of them are not heirloom varieties they're actually hybrids uh, of the summer squashes which are small squashes that, are, that you want to get them when they're small before they start producing seeds and boy they just add to your to your meals and all they're fantastic and there's there's so many of them then we get you know certainly everybody's seen those great big zucchini squashes well they don't have the flavor of the nice small zucchini squashes um, which those are summer squashes you're harvesting regularly throughout throughout the season uh, during the summer months with the winter squashes we want them to to make the appropriate changes in color like our butternut we want them to to make that that uh, cream colored uh, uh, change in their color from the yellow and we want the skin of them to be when you put your thumbnail through it you want the where the uh, vine attaches to the fruit itself you want that uh, drying out and turning a brownish a tan color as well then you want to go through the storing process or curing process so winter squashes so summer squashes sorry I'm keep banging things around here so there's summer squashes take them right out of the garden start slicing them right up and eat them within five minutes your winter squashes you're going to want to cure first so that it enhances their ability to, to store and also brings out the flavor in these uh, winter squashes as well so that's important so like the butternuts that we just harvested they should be kept at probably 70 to 80 degrees uh, inside for a couple of weeks before we put them in the root cellar to store them that'll bring out the flavor and all now our uh, the butternut squash that we harvested this season I don't know if I, that we actually showed that other than just showing them in the garden growing they were a a little blessing on the side uh, it was a seed that started in the western garden plot we let it grow and just harvested them uh, a little bit early for them they weren't completely mature but they do taste pretty good not as good as our typical ones that we get uh, that we grow each year like I really like the acorn squash the uh, butternut um, they're really simple and easy to deal with. I love the Blue Hubbard. They're tougher uh, to deal with. The Golden Delicious are very, very good. Thank you, Michael, uh, for the Golden Delicious uh, uh, varieties. The Georgia Sweet Candy Roaster uh, Squash, delicious. Uh, there's so many different varieties that are just absolutely amazing. And uh, But your winter squashes they they're to be consumed over the winter months and they have variable lengths of storing ability so some squashes won't st store nearly as long as other ones will so I think this video is getting a little bit too long so I'll post uh, three different articles on our website that's at mindfullivingsanctuary.com and uh, and hopefully this will be a little bit of an introduction and you've at least got a few of my rambling the articles will be a little bit more. Uh, my mind just just flows uh, uh, with with the thoughts as I'm going through. So hopefully this will be helpful. Please feel free to leave comments. Let me know what you think. And I don't know about this format of uh, recording videos. I just noticed now. I just looked at the screen. The sun's coming in and and whiting out my my head here as well. Well, thanks so much for watching. Stay safe. Take care. And happy gardening. It's always a good thing. Getting your hands in the soil is awesome. Take care now. Bye-bye.